So I'm here today with Rick Gordon of the Kohala Preservation and Conservation Trust, Dave Huertas, who is a, a rancher a neighboring uh, with Rick Gordon, and with Dave Klautsnitzer of the Natural Resource and Conservation Service. And today we're putting our heads together to try to solve a problem in this area. We're in uh, Javi or in the Kohala watershed on the Big Island, and the problem we're dealing with is Rovolfia vomitoria. Now, Rick, could you maybe help us in understanding uh, when you notice this becoming a problem? Well, we first started seeing it here and there like about eight years ago, maybe. Mm -hmm. Just small little individuals here and there. So not a real problem not then. Not a real problem then, but we could see that it was getting started. And within the last five years, it's just exploded. Right. And I'm noticing behind us, we have a, a flush of Rovolfia that yeah. looks to be mature canopy. How old is this, uh, is this stand here? Well, the, 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 ju the juveniles are probably about uh, six to eight months old. Right. The big mature trees are five years. Five at years? Most. At the most, and they'll, they'll get to be a foot to 18 inches at the butt in five years. Wow. And, and prolific seeders. Right. Huge amount of seeds. The birds seem to enjoy the seeds also. Right. And we're looking at a stand that's easily 15, maybe, uh, yeah, about 15 meters tall. And so for five years, that's a lot of production. And that's so, correct. Uh, we have an invasive weed on our hands uh, that we're hoping to address. Yeah. It's and absolutely terrifying what yeah. this stuff is doing. It's and spreading everywhere. Right. And Dave, you are, you're a neighboring rancher. Yes, I, I represent Pacific Plains today. And um, we've been seeing it for the last about eight years also. And it's just been really moving really quickly. It's, um, it's really scary for our Kohala forest, really yeah. scary. Mm -hmm. um, and we, we see it taking over pasture lands. And, and the only way I think we can, we can do this is is to um, work to collaboratively, you know, col to collaborate with all the landowners and, and try to solve this problem in, in North Kohala. Thank you for uh, CTAR, you know, and, and also NRCS, you know, for, for getting your guys uh, cocoa in helping us in this. Well, you're welcome. Well, hopefully we can come up with a solution. And, and it seems like with you two guys, we have most of the Rovolfia problem localized within those two properties. And so if we can come up with a meaningful solution, we might uh, be able to take care of this and not have it become a problem for other people as well. And so Dave, what do you know about Rovolfia? Are we familiar with this plant at all? Not very familiar, but we're learning more about it. It's uh, native to Western Africa, and there in its native habitat, it's endangered. It's used as a medicinal plant. I suppose it's being harvested. So we think that somebody in this area decided to experiment with a potential medicinal plant and it got out of hand. Right. So maybe we can harvest it and ship it to Africa if they need it so bad. <laughs> and so some of the invasive qualities that we're noticing on this species is, uh, as Rick had indicated, the, the rate of growth uh, is extreme. In five years you have full canopy that's well over 15 meters tall and more importantly it seems like the seed production is the biggest issue that we're dealing with. The seed production and also the fact that it, it outcompetes guava. It grows in the shade of eucalyptus trees. It grows in the shade, full sun, everywhere. And also in the, in the gulches where gulches. Our, our pristine um, streams and gulches are. Right, right. I've noticed that it seems to favor those ravine and waterways and so that's a real issue if we're trying to protect our water resources. And it grows faster than common guava. Yeah, right. Great. Well, let's see what we can take care of. Outstanding. Mahalo. Thank you. Seed production in large amounts is one of the uh, invasive qualities of this plant. Uh, David Fuertes collected uh, this bag full in about 20 minutes um, without a lot of effort. And there were still a lot of unripe seeds still on the branches. Now, do we know how many seed are in each of the fruit? It appears that there's one seed in each berry, and uh, they seem to be a good size for birds to swallow. Uh, but there are some uh, berries or, or uh, fruits here that have been apparently bitten by birds. So is, is, uh, are we assuming that the dispersal of this weed is from frugiv frugivorous activity? It birds appears, consuming it and, and then dispersing it in other locations? That appears to be so, Yeah. yes. So Rick, we're, uh, we're going to set up an experiment. We're going to do, do two different methods of, of herbicide application. One is a bro broadcast ap application of this lower profile uh, stand or thicket of the Rovolfia. This was a mowed stand, right? This is in Correct. juveniles. And uh, how, how long has it been since this was mowed last? This was mowed last 
probably three months ago. Okay, three months ago. So we're looking at a full summers of uh, flush growth. That's correct. And then, so I'll do a broadcast application and I'll use my field jet tip where it will give us a four meter swath across this area. And, uh, and then we'll also do a frill and squirt application on these mature stands behind. And you're going to be our frill man. You got the machete. And we'll have you uh, systematically um, cut around the base of the tree right. uh, and create little wedges. And then we'll aliquot herbicides into it. Okay. And so we're going to look at three different herbicides today. We're going to look at the Garlon 4, which is triclopyr, and then also the um, Arsenal Power Line which is a Mazapir, and also um, Roundup Ultra, the glyphosate. Uh, glyphosate and a Mazapir are both considered broad-spectrum herbicides, uh, while the Garlon is, is a common uh, herbicide used for uh, broadleaf-specific applications. And so again, we'll have two different methods, a broadcast application on this lower profile and a frill and cut application on mature stands. So Rick, you and I are going to set up the uh, frill and squirt application on mature revolfia. And you're going to be our hack man. You're going to use what? You got a saw and also a machete. Sure. And the idea is uh, to cut little uh, wedges and little canals. And then I'll follow up with the herbicide drip application. And because we're doing this in a scientific manner, I'm going to use a graduated pipette. We're going to apply five milliliters of concentrated herbicide around the frill that uh, Rick is going to provide for us. First remove the branches that are below our cut. That's correct. So, and what we said, I think, is that anything that you're going to use just a, a, a normal uh, cutting height, so approximately uh, 50 centimeters above the ground right. uh, for all the trees, so yeah. consistent uh, cutting height, and any, any uh, branches or uh, shoots that are regenerating below that you're going to remove first yes yes sir got it okay yep thank you okay so rick's going to remove that branch that's below what he's going to use for his frill i'll take that So the concept of the frill is to create kind of a canal so that when I apply the herbicide, it will actually uh, stick into the, uh, into the cambium and allow for the plant to absorb it. So you'll notice he's not trying to be aggressive in, in peeling off the bark. He's just making little incisions on an angle so that we have little uh, troughs. Okay, Chief, try that. You got it. Okay, so I'm, now I have five mLs of the uh, Imazapur formulation, and so I'll uh, direct it into the incisions that uh, Rick has made. And I'll try to make sure that I get around the plant the entire base of the stump. 